Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Daily Dose of Anime Recaps. In today's video, we'll be looking at episodes 5 through 8 of an anime named Skeleton Knight in a New World. So grab your popcorn, sit back, relax, and enjoy another amazing video. In a faraway place, a corrupt noble named Triton tries to sexually molest two beautiful elves who were kidnapped as slaves. Ark and Ariane, who are trying to liberate as many elf slaves as possible, fly towards the castle and break through the guards. A man working under Triton informs him about the intrusion, but his arrogance and condescension doesn't let him take the warning seriously as he scolds the man and orders him to finish the intruders. The next moment, Ark and Ariane burst through the door and save the elf slaves after Ariane kicks Triton with a low blow. While capturing Udalon, who was trying to escape, Ark accidentally finds the palace's gold deposit that makes him feel like he's won the jackpot. Ariane, on the other hand, keeps taking out her frustration on Triton as she continuously kicks him in rage and then leaves. The two slave elf girls take their revenge on him. Ark asks Ariane to deal with the rest of the palace guards while he collects the gold. Later, he tells Ariane that it wouldn't be wise to leave Triton's gold behind, as he can quickly recover and resume his dirty business of elf slave trading. As they leave the palace, explosions destroy it, and Ark thinks that it's the work of the ninja girl. Ark receives his payment from Ariane after completing the job, but looking at the gold he looted from the place, she feels flustered about the little payment in comparison. Not having any further plans, Ark takes on Ariane's offer to visit her hometown, the elf settlement of Lalatoya, which makes him thrilled. However, Ariane needs permission from the village elder to do so. She mentions that he'll have to have an audience with the village elder, and he'll have to remove his head armor. Ark brings up his courage and removes his helmet and reveals his skeleton face to her. He makes up a story and tells her the reason he looks like this is because of a curse he woke up with one day. Ariane isn't scared of him and trusts him because of his ability to use light magic and the fact that Ponte, being a spirit creature, is so attached to him despite having the ability to sense evil. She assures him that she and the other elves he meets will keep his secret safe. She also states the possibility that the village elder might know a way to lift the curse and thinks that it would apparently be a huge relief for Ark. In the capital city of Olaf, the human king Carlon, his sons Sect, and Dakares, and her daughter, Yuriarna, investigate the attack on Triton's castle, and his involvement in the slave trading of elves, which violates the Human Elf Treaty. The king decides to find the truth behind the matter to avoid any conflicts with the elves or the other nations. He orders Yuriarna to go to her elder sister to make arrangements to have a meeting with the elves. Yuriarna believes that Dakares is involved in the slaves' trade and Sect wants to expose him to secure his path to the throne. On their way to the elf village, Ark and Ariane pass through some thick grass. Ark tries to scout the area using his dimension move, but ends up falling down a path and discovers a lake. They set their camp there for a night and eat dinner, and after two days they reach the elf settlement of Lalatoya. As the door to the settlement opens, Ark can't contain his excitement and fantasies of what pleasures of curiosity are going to unfold before him. However, he has to wait as Ariane leaves him behind to take the elder's permission. He waits outside the settlement anxiously, and more than a half a day passes when Ariane returns, and finally it's time for Ark to enter the settlement. When he sees their lifestyle, it makes him delighted. He meets the elder Dylan and his wife Glynis, who are Ariane's parents. Dylan shows his gratitude for helping Ariane rescue the elf slaves, but he shows his concern about their attack on the palace. Ark defends Ariane and reasons by explaining the whole situation of saving two elf girls who were in danger at the palace. Dylan decides to travel to the elven capital, Maple, to inform the other fellow elders of different settlements in a meeting about the matter, and Ariane accompanies her father on his journey to the capital. At the time of the dinner, Ark worries about removing his helmet when Dylan tells him to feel at ease, as Ariane has already told him about his curse. Ark stays the night there, and the next morning finds out that Ariane and her father have already left for Maple. When he comes to the dining room, Glynis greets him by calling him Arky and serves him breakfast. Upon reaching the elven capital, Maple, Dylan and Ariane report to Chief Elder Brian Boyd Evangeline about the slave trade by humans and their attack on a human palace. Most of the other elders give them a cold shoulder for attacking the palace, but also worry about the slave trading business conducted by the humans, 
which is clearly in violation of the treaty among humans and elves. The chief elder decides to keep their operation of setting the slave elves free and meanwhile waits for the human king's response. Back at Lalatoya, Glynis shows Ark around. Some elves show their concern about a human walking in their settlement. However, two little girls recognize Ark and thank him for setting them free and healing them earlier. Glynis invites Ark to spar with her, which Ark hesitantly accepts. Glynis then shows her desire to test him as he is going to accompany Aryan on their dangerous mission. As the fight begins, the smiling, kind face of Glynis turns seriously excited and rushes toward Ark in a blink of an eye. She swiftly moves at the backside of Ark and instantly defeats Ark with a single sword attack in a matter of seconds. She offers Ark another round, which he accepts at once, and is excited to learn sportsmanship from such a talented warrior. However, it turns out the same, as she makes quick work of him once again. They keep sparring, and Ark piles up a lot of losses. In their last sparring match, Ark finds an opening and uses his dimension move, but is attacked by a swarm of attacks by Glennis, which makes him give up. He thinks he has many things to learn to improve his fighting techniques. When Ariane and her father return to Lalatoya, she feels down, but Dylan cheers her up and says he's happy that she set the elf girls free from the palace. He also discloses to her that her elder sister Even is getting married next year, which surprises her as she thinks that Even is a dedicated warrior and has sworn not to marry. Glynis shows Ark the way to the bathroom, and he feels excited as he hasn't had a nice relaxing bath for ages. As he's enjoying his bath with the utmost pleasure, Ariane accidentally enters the bathroom naked and sees Ark in his skeleton mode. She panics and blasts him with her fire explosions. Later at dinner, Dylan tells them that the chief elder has decided to continue the mission to rescue slave elves. He then shows his desire to hire Ark for the continuation of the mission at the expense of giving him information to break the curse upon his body. Dylan tells him about a dragon lord spring that can heal any curses, but the area is dangerous for a human to visit, so Ariane can help her go there, as elves are welcome there upon granted permission. Ark accepts their offer and agrees to continue the mission for them. However, he worries about the curse story that he made up himself without knowing if his body is actually cursed or not. On his bed, Ark questions himself. What if his body really is cursed? He then tries a curse-lifting magic he knows on his hand, and shockingly, his hand appears. However, the hand disappears instantly. He tries uncursing his hand again and again, but it disappears every time. However, this confirms that his body is actually cursed, so he looks forward to going to the Dragon Lord Spring to heal his body from the curse. The next morning, he sets out, along with Ariane, on their journey to the capital city of Olaf to hunt the listed criminal nobles involved in slave trading. Suddenly, some flying bugs show up and sting Ark as he runs here and there helplessly. Later, at a restaurant, they plan their next journey. Ariane suggests taking a shortcut through the forest instead of taking the long road next to the forest. However, a waitress warns them about haunted wolves in the forest and says not to enter the forest as ten men have been attacked there already. Ark sees the determination on Ariane's face to reach Olaf as soon as possible and decides to take the shortcut despite the danger. As they both move through the forest, they expect haunted wolves to attack them. Ariane tells Ark that the fur on the tails of the wolves is excellent for making a wedding veil and she wants to give a veil as a wedding gift on her wedding the next year. However, she thinks of it as a waste of time, as they need to hurry. Suddenly, a small pack of ferocious wolves appears before them. Ark easily cuts a wolf, but it turns out to be an illusion. It's revealed that the wolves have the ability to create multiple illusions to confuse their prey. Ark feels trouble with the wolves and keeps getting bitten by them. However, Ariane, who was already prepared for such an enemy, uses her magic art to brute force her way to kill the wolves. As more and more wolves bite Ark's armor, he takes motivation by watching Ariane's techniques. He then spots the wolf boss and uses his dimension move to attack him. The wolf boss dodges the attack when Ark sees the same ring in his foot that he saw on the other creatures. He then baits the wolf boss into his range, and after attacking him with fire, he cuts his ring. This causes the wolf boss to regain his senses as it aimlessly looks around. It then summons all the wolves back and retreats. Ark explains to Ariane that the animals were reacting strangely because of the mysterious rings. Afterwards, Ariane asks Ark to take a short break so she can collect the wolves' tails. 
Meanwhile, Princess Yuriarna leaves Olaf and sets out on a covert mission with her servant Ferna and a few guards. Yuriarna worries that her brother, Dakares, might cause trouble for them. Suddenly, they're attacked by some unknown men working for Dakares. Ponta senses evil and leads the way for Ark to the location of the attack on Princess's carriage. Ferna tries to save the princess, but is killed. The men then kill the princess and take her necklace as proof of successfully killing her. The next moment, Ark shows up there and dismantles the guard that betrayed the princess. As Ark looks at the bodies of the princess and her servant, Ferna, he thinks about healing them. The enemy men attack him with magic spells, but his powerful armor protects him. Suddenly, help arrives in the form of the wolves that Ark had fought earlier. Ark and the wolves attack the enemy men and scare them off. Later, Ark uses a powerful spell to heal the princess, Ferna, and most of the loyal guards, and then sneaks away. The princess, who was watching Ark while being half-conscious, thinks that he was sent as help from God and is more determined to complete the mission. Ark and Arion reach Olaf and walk through a market when they see a very young woman expertly beating up some thugs. As Ark stares at her fighting with such a level of mastery in her skills, he recognizes her as the cat-eared ninja girl. In a flashback, the ninja girl recalls meeting Ark while on a mission to free the enslaved fellow beast people. She introduces herself as Kiyomi, a ninja from the Jin Shin clan. As she explains more about her identity, Ark finds out that she is a shinobi. She asks Ark how he knows that she is a ninja, as the name was created by a human named Hanso. The name strikes Ark as Japanese, and the further details from Kiyomi confirm his suspicions that Hanso was also another person transported to this world centuries ago. As Kiyomi tells heroic stories of Hanso, Ark feels excited and accepts to himself that he is jealous of them as a Hanso person who gave rise to the ninja clan as one of his greatest achievements. Kiyomi asks for Ark's assistance to free her enslaved people. She offers them information about the slave traders Ark and Ariane are hunting as a payment for helping her. Ark, who is already employed by the elves, asks Ariane, who agrees to help Kiyomi after verifying her intentions, as she finds herself and Kiyomi on a similar mission to liberate their kin. The Prince Dakares feels furious when he learns that the rings on the wolves to control them in order to kill the princess have been broken. As he thinks he might be targeted, he is sent to a safe house by his subordinate, Cetrion. Kiyomi takes Ark and Arion to a location and shows them the biggest and most infamous slave trading market, Etsat and tells them that many beastmen slaves are being kept there. She lets them in on her plan to attack the market at night, as her fellow clan members have already infiltrated the market. However, she thinks that it's going to be very dangerous to attack Etsat Market, as the royal army is what they'll be dealing with. She further explains to them that someone has to attack Etsat and keep the army busy, as she and the others free the slaves from all the other markets in Olaf. When Kiyomi shows her concern for Ark and Ariant's lives, Ark reveals that his teleportation magic can be handy to keep them safe. This makes a sparkle in Kiyomi's eyes, who tells Ark that their founder, Danzo, also possessed the ability of teleportation, which she calls the space-time ninjutsu. She leaves to tell her other comrades about the teleportation ability of Ark, and meanwhile, Ark prepares for a fight that is nothing but a big feasty meal by all means. After enjoying the dramatic meal, Ark purchases a cloak and a tribal mask to hide his armor beneath it. Soon they meet with Kiyomi again, who introduces them to a comrade ninja, Gomen. Ark thinks that Gomen is the name of a famous ninja from Japan, and later thinks the same for Kiyomi. His heights of excitement flow to the roof when Kiyomi tells him that these are the title names given to them by their people, confirming Ark's hunch once again as he talks to himself in satisfaction. Suddenly, Gomen starts acting strange and moves closer to Ark, while giving him a keen stare. Both men abruptly challenge each other in a test of strength and, after realizing they're equally matched, become instant friends. Afterwards, everyone discusses the strategy and decide that Ark and Goman will attack through the Etsat's entrance while Kiyomi and Ariane infiltrate through the rear and set prisoners free. Ark and Goman smash through the front door of the market, which signals Kiyomi and Ariane to start doing their part. The guards try to attack Ark, but Ark blows every incoming guard with his fists while Goman turns his body to steel in order to stop the spear attacks from the guards. Ark then uses his magic to throw big rocks at the guards while Goman summons his rock spear strikes to annihilate the targets. As both Ark and Goman subdue the guards, 
They make it a contest when their boosted accumulated magic effect buries them under the rocks, as Kiyomi and Aryan make their infiltration into the Edsat and head inside the market to free the slaves.